At Stonehenge, it's always been about the sun. For more than 4,000 years, the monument has stood like a giant sundial, marking the longest day of the year and the shortest, taking aim at the sun like a giant stone gun sight. Yet Stonehenge is also about mystery. The big stone circle is only the most obvious part of the site. Lesser monuments, some much older and most of them buried under the soil now, stretch for miles across the landscape. There's certainly an increase in the amount of effort people are willing to put into constructing monuments. And they're being looked at in a way that's never been possible before, using high-definition ground-penetrating radar and other magnetic and resistance-sensitive survey equipment in what's being called the Hidden Landscapes Project. A documentary team from the Smithsonian Channel has been following the archaeologists around and using computer-generated imagery, it's been digitally reconstructing some of the monuments that have long since disappeared, like this burial chamber. Built of wooden posts with timbered walls and covered with earth, it predates Stonehenge by centuries and would have held the remains of around 50 bodies. Henry Chapman, an archaeologist from the University of Birmingham, England, says the project has produced more data than they know what to do with. It's a sort of sweet shop problem that when you when you're presented with loads of more information, you kind of think, oh right, so Which I want some I more pick? now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Moorish well, problem. Yeah, it's the Moorish problem. Yeah, yeah. And the new data has helped answer some old questions, like whether the giant stone circle, now somewhat gap-toothed, was ever complete. The digital probing and some dry patches that emerged during a recent drought seem to show that Stonehenge was once, in fact, a full circle. And we got a series of parch marks which showed us the positions of some stones which we'd never seen before at Stonehenge. The position of stone 17 here. Mark Bowden of English Heritage shows us how it looked. Stone 18 here. Stone 19 here. And... Stone 20 here. In many ways, I, I think we've had almost a false understanding of Stonehenge okay. and because we haven't been able to see the whole picture. What kind of false understanding? What, what, and how much of an understanding have we had? I think probably one of the, the most stunning ones is, is um, probably the largest monument in the landscape and quite hard to see, but the, the Greater Cursus, which is sort of running right across here, right. the huge monument. Which went on um, for miles. Literally. Yeah, yeah, literally, literally. I mean, it goes right from both horizons. The new imagery shows what they call the Greater Cursus, running like a huge ditch and mound in a massive loop across the countryside. Archaeologists had known it was there, but were never sure what it contained or what it was for. And the new gizmos have revealed details never previously seen in the hundreds of years Stonehenge has been studied. There were great pits and structures along its route, and all of them seem built in relation to the passage of the sun across the sky. In fact, the ends of the curses themselves line up with the main monument and the sun at the winter and summer solstice. These were extremely primitive Stone Age cultures, yet they seem to have figured out the sun thing. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's weird. I mean, it's, it's, I, I actually don't think we, we can see them actually as that, as that primitive. I mean, they're, they're farmers. Of course, they're going to be um, understanding when um, when summer is, when winter is, mm. they're reliant on it in terms mm. of their, their farming cycle. And actually the ability to measure that and to be able to see when, you know, different times of year is actually quite useful. It's a big clock. Yeah. A really big clock and maybe the world's most famous one. It draws millions of visitors, including oh President Obama when he dropped by last year. It's the size of the stones that impresses that and the fact that the big upright ones were somehow brought to this place from more than 30 miles away and some of the smaller ones brought from much further and all of that before the builders had use of the wheel. Stonehenge archaeologist and historian Susan Greeney spends a lot of time answering the one question that always comes up. How did they do it? It's one of those things where people say, um, well, prehistoric people were kind of unsophisticated and they were sort of ug -ug cavemen. No, they were building Stonehenge. If they were building Stonehenge, they were very sophisticated people. Stonehenge is unique. 
There's nothing like it in the entire world. There's no other lintled stone circle. When I say lintled, I mean the horizontal stones on the top of the other stones. So it tells us a huge amount about the sophistication of, of our prehistoric ancestors. Whatever its technical wonder, Stonehenge is also a spiritual place. Some of the findings suggest ancient rituals, including possibly human sacrifice, may have been carried out here. Legends persist that the place was a ceremonial ground for druids, despite the fact there's no evidence the mystical cult that existed about 2,000 years ago was ever here. May there be peace in the West. That hasn't stopped modern-day devotees from coming back. Although the modern surveyors have discovered evidence of other activity. There's also, as you imagine in this, in this landscape, there are festivals here in the 80s. So what we've also picked up is a lot of material, um, particularly just in, in this area. <laughs> little semi-combusted little pieces. <laughs> yes, it is. We even found the latrine, which is just in this area. Right. What they haven't found, though, is meaning. No machine can do that. There's elements to do with solar lunar alignments, um, yeah, marking time. Um, it's, it's almost certainly a temple, but it also has all these other sort of functions. So when we start sort of saying, what, what's the meaning of Stonehenge? I think probably, how many reasons do you need? The technical survey has increased the appetite for more traditional archeological study. Until you dig, you don't really know what's there. And now they have so many more places to dig. The mystery lives on. Absolutely. And long may it live on. <laughs>